Welcome to our segment where we talk about the Bible and science. Please remember that science points us to God because God is the creator of all the universe and we see His fingerprints throughout uh, His creation. In this segment, we want to talk about the gap theory, also called the ruin reconstruction theory and the restitution theory. Uh, around the 19th century, many science Many in the science field started saying that the earth was older than 10,000 years. Currently, the evolutionist theory teaches that the world is 4.5 billion years old. So when you read the Bible, you are given a view that the earth is much younger. So some Christians uh, with good intentions have tried to reconcile the Bible and this uh, science theory uh, that the earth is um, much older. And so they have to find an opportunity to get a much older earth in the Bible. So, so where do you find that? Well, these Christians found their opportunity between the first and second verses of the Bible. And Genesis 1, uh, 1 begins this way, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2 says, The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Now, when you read that, you would just think that when God created the world, He started with just maybe like a lump of clay. You know what I mean? You just nothing there. And then in verse uh, 2, is just saying there's nothing there. And then we start getting into the days of creation. However, according to the proponents of the gap theory, Genesis 1-1 describes God's original creation, and it was perfect. And then Satan rebelled in heaven between verses 1 and 2 and was cast out. And because he was cast out, the battle took place here on earth, and Satan's sin ruined the original design, that is, his rebellion brought about its destruction and eventual death, and the earth was reduced to its formless and empty state, ready for the reconstruction. And so uh, the length of time involved uh, is what we call the gap, the size of the gap, and it's not specified, but uh, between verses 1 and 2, these people believe it could have lasted millions of years or possibly... 4.5 billion years. So however the scientific theory is of the day, they keep saying that would fit in there, and that's why it's called the gap theory. Now, of course, uh, Satan must have fallen before Adam did. We, we know that. Otherwise, there would have been no temptation in the garden. And young earth creationists, which I am, I will tell you I'm a young earth creationist, say that uh, Satan fell sometime after uh, Genesis 1.31. Now, gap creationists said that Satan uh, fell uh, between Genesis 1.1 and Genesis 2, or 1.2. So, you would have to admit that that is a lot of information read into a gap between two verses. Um, you know, I will tell you that uh, uh, this theory would explain when they do carbon dating on rocks, uh, how they get millions of years old. I've talked before in previous uh, Bible and science talks about how I'm not a proponent of the accuracy of these dating of rocks. Uh, when we know how young a rock is, like that comes, that is formed from a volcanic eruption, and then you do carbon dating on them, we know exactly how old that rock is, and yet it will be way off uh, with carbon dating. So I'm not a proponent of, of uh, carbon dating on rocks. And even though the gap theory may give, uh, may provide an opportunity uh, for the earth to be billions of years old, uh, here are some reasons why I don't think this is a theory to be, to be uh, followed, to be believed. Uh, first, it is uh, inconsistent with God creating everything in six days. It just goes against that. It puts death, disease, and suffering before the fall, which is contrary to what Scripture says. And then the gap theory ignores the evidence of a very young earth. Now, 
Genesis 1-2 is uh, best viewed as a description of the earth in the first stage of a process. Uh, perhaps uh, the verse could be better translated, now the earth came into being um, unformed and unfilled, and the process of forming and filling the earth then unfolded in, the, in six creative days. That would make that uh, uh, verse uh, 1 and 2 make a lot more sense to us, and you wouldn't have people trying to squeeze something into what is called that gap theory. Now, I want you to understand this. And this is how you can deal with when people say the earth is old. Any act of creation will, of necessity, carry with it the appearance of being older. Even if God created only the simplest forms in the beginning, there would have necessarily had the appearance of everything being older. Uh, the first light source, the waters, the first vegetation, even if it was only seeds, the sun, the moon, the creatures, and Adam and Eve looked older than they were when they were first appeared. I mean, when God created Adam and Eve, they wouldn't have been babies. They would have been older, even though they didn't have, you know, the, the crawling around on the ground and, and that kind of thing. And so uh, everything that God created looked older. Uh, this would be normal for miracles. Think about the wine that Jesus made at, uh, uh, from water in Cana. It appeared to have gone through the natural processes involved in making wine, but it hadn't. It was water, then it was wine. If you didn't know any better, you would have thought that wine had gone through all the processing, the aging, and all the things that wine has to do. And we read about that miracle in John 2. The food that fed the 5,000 men on one occasion and fed another 4,000 later on a, uh, uh, had the appearance that had, had, it had been grown, harvested, whereas it in actuality had no chronological history at all. God just kept, you know, breaking the fish up and, and uh, breaking the bread up and, and feeding it. And, and yet, if you didn't know any better, you thought that started out that bread, you know, started out as wheat and grew and then was harvested. So even when God makes something, it would have the appearance of looking much older than it actually was. Therefore, a newly created earth would have the attributes of a much older earth. I hope you've enjoyed this week's segment of Bible and Science. Please remember that we Christians are never afraid of science. On the contrary, we embrace natural science because God is our creator and there are no surprises to him. Bible and science. The Bible and science.